Hachi you want me to fire it for you? I will do it. I think I found it on the first Actually, turn. she would be easier than that. <laughs> but don't you so you didn't even it? try. Okay. I mean... Oh! Okay, I uh, totally made this a like, total brain flood because I thought that... Um... That... This is really stupid. I thought that... The, the foundry was after their weekly Smash 4 event, but it's... No, it's always... Yeah. Alrighty. So... Awkward pause for five seconds. Sure. Alright. Sup with it, and welcome to another episode of Zero to Hero. Um, you already know, this is Tafokens, a.k.a. Sheikmain, a.k.a. NASA rocket scientist dude. A.k.a. $1,000 money match winner. Yes. And future EVO champion, who are you? Utriok. Uh, Twitch employee, Sheik main, aspiring Evo champion, future Evo champion, and uh, and student in this show, learner. Now, are you gonna put that in your Twitter? After I win, <laughs> I'm gonna copy Mango's profile word for word and change it for one uh, X Evo champion. One <laughs> X Evo champion. <laughs> You know what's amazing about um, Mango is that he actually hit me up and said, "Hey, do you want to play some games on Wednesday?" Because he needs to get back into the tournament grind. Did he really? Yeah. There's a secret Mango that actually practices and cares, and he never shows it off. He pretends like he doesn't. He does. He cares. No, dude, his training regimen before Evo was insane. Yeah. Like the one thing that kind of bugs me and kind of goes ties into everything. Like there's that that uh, nebulous natural aura to him where people just assume oh mango's just a natural guy like he just yeah it's a low there's no natural in any game nobody is a natural people might have some talent but they practice so so much to get that good yeah it's, there might only be one person maybe Mewtwo King has more hours in Smash than, than Mango but I bet Mango's top three in the world you know what I'm saying in terms yeah. of hours yeah like, if talent, if the difference between, like, a very talented player was this bar on the left and this bar on the right. You know, we're not sharing screens, so I can't see the bars you're talking about. Oh. I, you know I rap in bars, too. <laughs> right. Tell you're not a rapper. But I'm not a rapper. I'm a rapper. Actually, you should see me when I'm, like, tipsy. Okay, so you know these, like, two little bars on the bottom right? A little hard to see. Yep. If those bars represent like a low talented person and a high talented person, like just like natural raw talent, then yeah. like, and we look at like the ceiling of like how good like a top player is, like would yeah. probably be somewhere up here. Um, right, the rest be, of it's filled in with practice. <laughs> yeah, like the remaining components, just to illustrate this, because I want to emphasize, because a lot of people, because I get this out a lot on my Ask FM. Um, this is the amount of hard work that both players had to put in to get to where they were. Do you see that little bar of brown? That's probably natural talent, and granted, that probably got them, um, that probably got them to a certain point in the beginning, but then, like, look at how much you need beyond that to, like, get as good as Mango or whatever. Yep. So, yeah. Just wanted to clear that. Not even it's that much. I believe it's even less. You, you know what? Yeah, it gives the right. tiniest of edges. Maybe if both players are super 10,000 hours practice. And maybe the edges when they're just beginning. But other than that, oh, it's Blur. Blur giving me a smile. Let's get a quick cameo from the kid Crimson Blur. A quick cameo. There he is. Yo, you're doing the show? I'm doing the show right now. We're well, talking about uh, talent versus uh, practice. Ethic. Green would be practice. And the, you know, talent's like nothing. <laughs> Oh, you, oh, so talent's nothing. Then. Well, I have massive talent. <laughs> I thought, I, I thought, for me, the, I thought for the, me whole the green bar. bar is talent because I'm going to win Evo with no That practice. little red bar, you know what they say about... I think that looks kind of like crimson to me. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's, the that, red that is crimson is, worse skill and the green is everyone else's. And you are maybe, just... Maybe. To work you, to you know, if you weren't a TO and you didn't do as much community development... Wow. It's a bush controller. Look at this nasty analog oh. nub. Looks good. Atafa, I want you to finish that thought, because I think that's a very interesting thought you're about to have. Okay, so Crimson, if you didn't spend your life helping the community or TOing, like, you might, if this was Mango on the left, oh, or Mango on the right, you would be, like, somewhere, like, here. 
please do not yeah. compliment Crimson Blue. As a pun. No, you know, that's there actually no true, room. You played me there's now. not room in this room for his ego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Room. That's actually too much ego. <laughs> that's a, right. that's but much now ego. as it stands, you have, like, very little effort, so you're, like, here. Yeah. Ooh. Actually, my, my talent bar is definitely bigger than my effort bar at this point, because my effort is just... This is not there. Yeah. I'm gonna cut it out. I'm gonna let you guys uh, go right, back to the show. We're trying to learn some things here. Learn some yeah. things. Yeah. You you learn things. You need it. Okay. All right. Let's let's do the show. Let's go into a tap. I'm okay. ready to learn. All right. So how are you doing? I am doing really good. Uh, both in life right now, having a good time, my job, and in melee, where I feel like I'm finally making some strides. So, double whammy. You know, isn't your work like a double whammy? Like, don't you indirectly like? Doesn't the success of Melee kind of indirectly benefit your job life, too? You know, it does, but not to the extent that some of the Melee people I've talked to think it does. Melee is, is a fraction of a fraction of percent of Twitch's uh, viewers. Like, I wish it was bigger. For big finals like Apex, people do watch it in, in mass, but, like, day-to-day, -day, League of Legends makes more viewers in a day than Twitch, I mean, Melee does for, you know, months and months. So uh, I'm not really doing this because of its impact on the job. Crimson Blue is—he's trying to build a scene for Twitch. I just like—I just love the game. I think it's one of the best games ever made. I'm so and so so impressed by it. Uh, the more you play, the more you see how beautiful it is. That's why I'm into it. I, I really don't have a, a job-related reason. Aww. <laughs> you know what? And even if I didn't have this audience, I'm probably echoing. Um, I would still be doing this for you. That's <laughs> yeah, you actually were. I want to shout out Tapo. When I was at Apex in my pool, he just came up and gave me tips, unrequested. I didn't like at the bay. He just, he was a nice guy. He's a helpful dude. He like likes to help people out. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. All right, let's go. All right. Oh. What did we do last week? Apparently, defensive game, SDI, teching, and minimizing losses. Let me see what I actually remember from last week because my defensive game is still pretty weak. Especially, I'm not. I'm not SDIing. I think SDIing is is incredibly difficult. It takes such presence of mind and presence of like mechanical ability. I, I'm I'm better at it for uh, Fox's up throw up smash because I actually can practice that. Yeah. Everything else, it's like this is going to take some time, and I'm, I'm ready to go for the long haul. But that's not like a thing you can learn overnight yeah. or even close to it. Uh, attacking. Uh, just remembering to tech everything. Uh, even pro players mess some stuff up, but I, I think that's something you can get down because it's not you have a lot of time to react really on most yeah. things. Um, and minimizing losses, I, I get the general idea. Yeah. Gotcha. And overall, like I like to think of like SDIing, like and getting used to like up throw up air is like using zonias when you get ulted. Like oh it's, yeah, it's like counterintuitive because it's like an extra item that you're not used to, and then. Over time, you just remember to do it. There's a lot of... I used to like kind of help out newer players in, in League, and one of the worst things I'd see is them buying these active items like Zonia's or Shirelia's Reverie or those items, and they would never uh, use them. And I'm like, why did you pay that extra money for that active? You're not going to use it. So, yep. Yeah. Except SDIing is free. <laughs> just like Crimson Blur. Yeah. Yeah, so free, dude. I can't wait. Uh, I think by the end of this series, I'm already taking some games off the kid. Oh, really? Nice. Is Marth? Uh, occasionally is Marth. Everything else free. His Marth is, is so fast that I have trouble getting it. He's, he's got a pretty good... Um, neutral game. Neutral. Like, he dash dance, detail, grab. He does all the stuff that other Marths I play don't do very well yet. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yep. Uh, um, so some of, the, some of this will, like, talk to the greater audience since it seems like... A lot of people have like repeated questions, so um, I feel like you have a good mindset relative to the other people I've trained, or like people who um, who I see at tournaments who kind of hit these grooves. So just talking about like a move, like just like general philosophy of what I see in terms of improvement. Um, so like yeah. measuring improvement in melee is like sporadic. Like you, it's not like necessarily a linear thing. Sometimes you may feel like you're going backwards. One day you may notice like he heavy games, not heavy games, um, and there may be months where you just don't seem to notice a difference. You're placing 25th every week, you barely not make it out of pools, and it's very frustrating. Right. Um, um, that's a reality that I think everybody faces um, in all regions. I, I, I had that that hump from like going to um, going from uh, like one of these little like humps. Like from here to like here, 
Like, sometimes yeah. it could take, like, three months. They could take six months. It's like getting stuck in, like, plat two for, like, four months. And it can be depressing. Yep. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, but, one thing I like to tell people, is, and I've noticed, if you feel yourself, uh, if you're practicing a lot, if you know you're practicing, like, putting in the effort, and you feel yourself going backwards, you're, like, losing to people you wouldn't have lost to before, that is a good sign. In general, that always means a breakthrough is coming. Like, that means you're, like, put, trying new stuff in your game that you're not used to yet. Yeah. And when you get it down, you end up stronger. Almost always I've seen this happen. People are losing, they're like, oh, I'm getting worse, or something's happening, I don't feel as comfortable. They always end up better if they keep it. They, you're putting the time in. Yeah. It's like a universal I've noticed. So don't feel discouraged if you feel yourself like, sliding back a little bit. As long as you know you're putting the time, that's a good sign. That means you're going to get better. I totally agree. And it's like not like a computer either, because like your opponents are improving too. Yeah, true. They, they adapt too. You have to give your opponents credit. And once you beat your opponent once, it means once you get it better, I guess like the percentage chance that you'll beat your opponent goes up. But like if you beat them once, doesn't mean that you're gonna beat them 100% of the time. Although you'd want that to happen, it might turn yeah. from like I can beat them 20% of the time to wow I can win like we trade sets to wow I win most of the time, but once in a while he upsets me to like there's like different degrees. Yeah, I, I feel. I so dealing with disappointment, so a re-evolving theme I had in my Ask FM today is like how do I deal with results and stuff, or like, and I always re-emphasize focus on situations and not results, um, because uh, once you discover solutions to very micro-based things in 10 second increments of situations, and you begin to say, well, you do this, or these are the array of options that you can do, um, if you can break those down, then you will improve and your results will show out of that. Because if you just say, oh, I got 17th, I got 25th, it doesn't really say much. Yeah, it's so much variance, so much randomness in that. You just, yeah. So downswings happen, stagnation happens, like keep, keep your morale up. This is just for everybody that's watching. Um, and this is like the point where, um, you know, we've made a couple of jumps um, in your play, or you, you have through your practice. And to the difference between um, where you are and I feel like you know like the 25th place the Skeeters is that they just know a little bit more about the game than you do and they yep. put they have a bit more tech skill than you and they do everything just a little bit better and yep. so as you deal like with the baseline fundamentals it really just comes into this like kind of repetitive process that we have here of what I call fine tuning it's just kind of just play, record, study, theory craft, and implement and then just repeat that over and over again. Have you done that in other games? Yep. I, I think recording and analyzing, I don't do it enough in my uh, in Melee, to be honest. I used to do a lot, a ton, well, because we don't have replays. And I'm so excited about this 20XX replays thing. Yeah. Uh, because replays, especially in StarCraft when they got good, were like the core. You'd play a game or two games, you'd watch the replays, minute by minute, where did I make a mistake, where did I make a mistake, Go back, play again. Just repeat the cycle over and over, and you'll see yourself getting improving so quickly. Uh, because that's the hard stuff that people don't want to do. Yeah. People love playing to get better. People hate studying to get better. They hate it. So if you ever have a chance to do it, you can see yourself getting advantages over people in your skill level very quickly. I feel like it's like very unbalanced. So like emphasizing the cap capitalization here, it's like most people just play. But, yeah, like you develop very like skewed muscles by doing this, and if you like want to improve well, and this is just a philosophy in life, you study what you did and you make changes. Yep. Uh, this goes for work. This goes for video games. This goes for relationships. It applies to everything. I think melee disproportionately rewards the only play style. Not as much as studying, obviously, but. You don't need studying as much because tech skill is so, so incredibly important in Melee that if you don't have crispy tech skill, you're just you're not at a baseline to even play most people. Yeah. So, like, you need, you need to have a higher than most other games, I think. StarCraft has tech skill, but, like, a lot of it is just getting the right uh, moves, right scouting, knowing what you're doing, so you can study for a lot of it. Melee, I mean, it's a real huge barrier, so you need to be able to do both. And if these bottom three aren't Record, so play is easy. Anybody can do it. Record, like you can pretty much just buy equipment and read like a short 10 minute guide on how to record matches, done. These bottom three, if you're not sure how to do it, watch my previous episodes. 
or just sweet talk your way with a top with a medium player or a top level player at a tournament and say hey like like what do you look for in matches and like start to like pick their brain and then get get a mindset of how they look at the game yep you can also uh like find a top level matchup of the same matchup that's that you played in your recorded video and look at the differences like what is he doing that you're not uh another thing i like to do is actually there's tons of resources on like r slash ssbm if you post your video saying like with some real questions on my play people will answer it there's a lot of free advice out there of people that just want to help you out i've seen these threads on on the subreddit people posting their, their video and asking for critiques and they get them i mean there's like tons of ways you can do it so recording is a huge asset and if you're an ice climbers main like all those ice climbers geek out so if you like Tweet, tweet out like fly Amanita. Chances are he'll answer your question. Like, and these are like the best players. Melee is so cool like that. Uh, the top players are like so much more accessible than most other games. Like they want to talk about the game. They want to help. Uh, I think that's super cool. Yeah. Fly yeah, exactly. In contrast, like League of Legends is like, oh, where's my donation? <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah, I'm never gonna get like Bjergsen to help me out with mid lane. So it's like it's pretty funny. Um, so we'll talk about floaties, and um, I noticed that Austin bodied you pretty bad. Asuza? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. I, I've rarely been bodied that hard in my life. In like a, a way where I felt nothing I did was right. <laughs> uh, I felt like he did some things, but... Uh, really? Man, watching that set again, I felt even worse than when I played it, and when I played it, I felt yeah. completely like... When I played Shroom, for example, I got the same amount of stocks. I think I got pretty much crushed both games, but but I, I don't know. I felt like I was I wasn't just slower. I was just not doing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. As soon as it bodied me, it's in my soul. Do you have peach? Any peaches that you play with? Yep. No, I don't, and that was probably why. I, I, I the matchup, I had no idea. I like I would down throw him, and I would go for the forwarder because I thought that was guaranteed, and then like he would nair, and I just. Or I would jump into a platform and take ninety percent from a down smash, and it's like, oh no. Yeah, Peach is one of those characters that if you don't know how to play her, you're just gonna lose, and you're gonna wonder what happened. Yeah, I, I felt like I had been thrown through a washing machine after yeah. I got that, so. Um, so with floaties, um, general concepts. This is like kind of for chic. Um, um, what you need is like a good concept of zoning and stage control. Well, I mean, I guess that's equally applicable. But sure. um, dash dancing, because you're the faster character, um, you can weave in and out faster than they can. That's what I see uh, Shroom do. I watched his sets versus Asusa afterwards, because I wanted to see, like, well, what's the difference? And he did a lot of, like, dash dancing and baiting stuff out, and then going from there. So, for sure, I can see that happening. And then tight timing and spacing. Panic basket, dude. Oh, okay. It went back up. Are we back? Yeah. You sure? So this is create two new separate broadcasts. <laughs> Panic basket. I'll get her back. It looks like we're back. Okay. So. Um, okay. So yeah. to go back Don't over. What you said the last. So you need good concept of zoning, dash dancing, because you're the faster character. You have. I mean, this makes to like flesh this out for players that haven't been listening like the reason why you can get away with dash dancing is because if you're playing against a faster character and you try to dash dance them they can just catch you because they're faster but if you're faster than them you you have all power in the dash dancing game because they can't catch you right um tight timing and spacing mainly because these slower characters like if you look at that gnarly luigi's hitbox of his nair like they yeah. rely on trading with you but it's slow. They're slow characters, and so they rely on these trades. But if you're tight on your timing and your spacing, like they're not going to be able to hit you with that because they're slow. And after they throw out that attack, they're super vulnerable. Sick. Um, so, so these are like the general philosophies. So as um, when you play against spaces, you want to try to push like every advantage you can because like otherwise, like you're just going to lose because they can run away. Right. Well, like, now you're in the position where you can run away. Uh, but in general, like, you don't want to give up too much stage control. So, A, learn to hold position for non-guaranteed situations. Okay. Like, like, let's say you're up close here, but you're like, I don't like that position. You can always mm -hmm. go this far back and just go outside of Peach's range here. And just 
you know, instead of risking a situation where you're this close, where it's like kind of questionable, where they can jab, you can jab, you can grab, they can spot dodge, they can down smash. Right. Where, where it becomes like this like percentage guess thing, where like if you did that situation a hundred times, you may win like fifty times, but they win like fifty times. Um, yeah, you want something more concrete. Yeah. With yeah. with floaties, you can afford that. Um, sure, can, that's awesome. Um, where in this situation, you could get into the fair pressure, and now that turns into an 80-20 situation. Uh, I like those odds. Yeah. Um, in contrast, um, let me show some positions. Uh, like, or if like the peach is floating in front of you, you know, like they can do that stupid fair, and like it does a lot. It has like a disjointed hitbox. Um, yeah. You know, like you can instead of just like competing with it, maybe I can show like a visual example. Will this mad at you? Alright. You can see my screen, right? Yep. Uh, like, there's this classic position, and I'll just show you just for example. Like, you know where they like stand here? Yeah. Okay, this mark is annoying. Like, they stand here, right? Yeah. And like, they can throw out that disjointed fear. They're like set up, right? They have their, yeah. their they have their tanks in StarCraft. They're, they have their cannons as Heimdinger. Um, yeah. You can, yeah. a lot of people, if they're new and they're stubborn, they'll go like, oh, I want to compete with that space that, that the Peach has with the fair. Sure. But like, you don't have to fight, you don't have the fighter there. Like, you can just run away. Cause, True. Because she has five seconds before she has to land. And for a melee player, for some reason, May, uh, five seconds feels like eternity. It feels so long. Yeah. And I play Sheik. I can only imagine someone that plays like Falco or something. Like, how can they wait? <laughs> Dude, Pee Pee, watch, watch Pee Pee, and he's like the master of I'm not going to take any nonsense positions, and I'm only going to take stuff guaranteed. When you watch his Falco play against Peach, oh, it's like three seconds. Okay, my bad. But yeah. yeah, but eventually she has to land, and then once she's landed, you just throw out your fares, and now you're at an advantage. And so, so always have you always have the option to reset. That's like the most important thing in this matchup. But make sure, like in resetting, you're not running to the other side of the stage. Like reset enough that like you're still a threat. But right, right, right. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, reset when losing as much stage as possible. Okay, so um, floaties can get super nuanced, so we're just going to go straight into your match, and I'm going to laugh at you. Great, great. Love it. Atrioc and Azusa. Azusa's really good. Like, the last time he played, he beat me. All close matches, yeah. but... Super, super, super good. Yeah. I also I want... more of his games now that I lost to him, and I just he's good. He beats a lot of good players. He got super far this foundry too. He got like third or something. Yeah, was, yeah, yes, sir. He beat Silent Wolf. Yeah, he beat Silent Wolf. Oh my god! I have to take a stock off this guy. He's beating Silent Wolf. No, thank you. Yeah, I actually um said so to be un totally like I actually taught him a lot of the Sheik matchup. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, back when I was at Berkeley like two years ago. Oh, uh, so when you said he's good at the Sheik matchup, you were complimenting yourself. Um, indirectly, because um, back then he had very little concept of stage control because he was so used to fighting Fox and being up close that every right. time he got me in a corner, I would just roll like across from him and just run away and do like another 70 damage before like he get me cornered, and then I just roll towards the center stage and just run away again and do something. <laughs> um, but now he knows to control stage and not let me do that. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, he controlled. He beat me in every aspect hard. Yeah. Ugh. He was just destroying me. All right, let's go. Let's watch it. Spencer, charge. This. Okay, so like I said um, in the beginning, I felt that you were way too frisky. Um, frisky. Like in these situations, I could see why you um, want to go for these raw grabs because you're used to playing Fox and Falco, where you yes. are rewarded very generously. I... That even if you don't get it and you get hit, it's like, well, I take eight percent or ten percent, but if I get this grab, I can do fifty percent. Yep. So I can see it's almost like you're playing two versions of the game by playing a floaty and playing against a fox or falco. So you got to have your floaty hat on. So <laughs> I'm not to do the charge. 
Brody hat's on. Yeah. Okay. So you grab him here. Very fortunate. Okay. Fortunate. That was raw skill. That was Evo winning skill. Okay. All right. You can convert more off of here. He DIs away. And last week we talked about not doing this episode. Doing this, doing a regrab. Yeah. But you have to is be tight safe? on it. You have to be tight on it. It is safe. Uh, no, no. Is it the same punishes as, as Martha's Peach? Um, the percentages are lower that you can punish. So Martha can regrab like the DI way up to like sixty or seventy. Peach is only like thirty ish. Oh, okay. But like the same kind of stuff, like up smashes are one way. Uh, Regret to go DI hard away. Um, <laughs> like I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't really up smash in this matchup. Okay. If they DI in, um, I don't know. It's more of like an intuitive thing for me. If they're like a certain degree in, I either F tilt or up tilt because even if they DI away, like they're still in range of getting slapped. Okay. But usually if they DI in, it's like down throw into like aerial. Into stage control. Alright, I really like... So... No chance of hitting there. So in this situation, instead of rising aerial, mm -hmm. um, do falling aerials. Right. And enforce the shield. Ugh. And you learn the pains of holding down. Oh my god, I learned them many times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No reason for that. Oh god. <laughs> Alright. That was kinda of silly. So going back here before the dash attack. Remember, just hold stage and just walk up here and then and then if she, you can catch her before she can refloat, go for the fair. Okay. But alternatively, like you have to check here. So this is your pivot point. This is where yeah. like you set, you go here, and if you can, like, force a shield and then play accordingly. But if she can mobilize, it gets a little tricky here because she can do a variety of things. But this is, like, your dream spot. Okay. If she's stationary. Now, if she's not stationary and she can dash dance, this gets a little tricky. You weave in and out and force her to do a dash attack if she's mobile or, like, has ac active frames. But okay. I, I don't know if that's, like, explained really well. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. All right, why, why, what was that? I don't know, I thought it would work. Definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I okay canceled it, oh, it's slow. Yeah. All right, so in this situation, it's you have to be able to hit with the hitbox as fast as you can. Um, right. This is after you got hit? Okay, so you have to learn how to like hit as fast as you can, because like when you play against like Luigi, Samus, um, Sheik, and Peach, anyone with like a really fast nair, like you have to be no nonsense about it. So, yeah. Yeah, right, I could have hit that. Is what you're saying? Yeah, okay. but you're slow on jumping, so you have to work on like like jumping like to fall to the from the hit confirm, I guess. And that's... Got, and that turned to a situation where you could have added damage to you took a ton of damage. Right. Yeah. Good follow up there. And Ugh. so you're a little greedy here. So a lot of a lot of this a lot of playing Peach is like knowing when to push your punishes and not being greedy. So she has she's like in active frames. Like she's she can do whatever she wants. And so her threat with her disjointed hitbox is like this large. More than anything you could throw out. Yeah. So instead here, what I would like to do is I'd like kind of like push back and like throw out a fair, because fair is your best hitbox. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, but I think that was just a lack of knowledge. Yeah. Um, I actually don't mind that if you air dodge closer because you're trying to fight for center, which I, which was not bad. Um, good. Okay, I have to give you props here. You did not fare off the stage. <laughs> like, 
That was like amazing. I'm sure I wanted to subconsciously, but I guess I stopped myself. All right. And oh. in, in that, there's no follow up. And I think that just comes through to like a lack of experience. Right. I mean, the only possibility I could see there is if you double jumped really quick and you fared. But I, I don't know if that would hit. Okay. You, oh. you misspaced the fare and you paid the ultimate price. <laughs> So a lot of it just comes down to like really like micro spacing, like just like messing up the aerials. No, no. <laughs> oh, crotch cancel. All right, not the most exciting match. No, it's it is a very uh, okay we'll rough see rough game. I get a stock though. Look at the kid. Alright. I like that you apply pressure here. Um, when she's trying to come back. Okay. You you start to get some discipline. Um, and I like that. Um, remember, you always have needles. Yeah. I need to remember that. Yeah. Alright. That, uh, that was an appropriate time. And oh! Look at that. It just goes out there. No. It's a bad needle. See, as I remembered, too late and too poorly. Yeah. Oh. You try to catch it? No. Actually, what do you press to catch it? Z? A. Oh, A. Yeah. yeah. I've never caught anything. It's my scar. I got another person walking past. And <laughs> Jeff. All right. At this point, it seems like you just kind of panic and you lose all sense of what to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just like desperation at this point. Yeah. You're just like throwing out one last like fist. <laughs> Poor you. Yeah, it's a struggle. I mean, actually, it was fine. Uh, I did not go into this match <laughs> with high hopes. No, you take a 60% down smash. Yeah, right off the bat. I just jump into it, and that's when I knew this was, this was going to be rough. You know what was rough? You not only got away with it the first time, you did it twice. <laughs> All right, you get away there for not doing yeah. it, and then you and then I go back. I go back. I was like, "Wait, you deserve that." Sixty percent. I think if you wanted to, you could have beat me this entire game using only down smash. He probably could have, but we'll we'll say he can't because you can. <laughs> you can you're better than that. All right. So I don't know what's like going through your head here, like. Um. I, I don't know. This game, I would say the last game is more reflective of my attempt to try to beat him. This game was just bad. Like I don't. Oh man, that was a that was a. I have to say that was a really gnarly turn up by Azusa. He makes an amazing turn up play this game, and he uh, they got some props. It made it a less boring match. Uh, yeah, we already passed it. We passed it. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, this is just you getting out, like you said, every way. But there's, like, yeah. little, like, glimpses. I think, like, overall, um, just being a little, like, having just better game sense and combo sense. Like, so right here, like, I would have probably back here because that's the fastest, like, aerial that I can do here. Right. But you misspace it. And so um, learning, like, how to, like, target hitboxes, like, quickly. I already have fade here. Oh no, I don't. I get a fade. Okay, never mind. So, a lot of uh, a lot of Sheik versus Peach honestly is like one of the most like it's actually a really lame matchup. It's who who like honestly, it's whoever throws a hit first hitbox first loses. <laughs> but you you kind of have to throw out hitboxes eventually. Right. Um, see like how he threw out the first hitbox and you won there. Yeah. Like, it's like making your opponent think that they're good and invading them into throwing out a hitbox and then running away like a little wiener and <laughs> then hitting them with your hill and hitbox to counter hit them. Okay. I'll keep that in mind when I play the matchup. Yeah. Like, pretend you're like Urgot against Zed and you're just waiting for them to hit you and then you just suppress them and own them. So, that's a. Uh, Unfortunate. So, 
this is like one of those things where you don't want to take too much um, initiative. Um, you you go like I guess I'll show the example here. Um, and this is like the basis of like if you ever um, if you're ever like the faster character. Um, this is something that like hacks kind of. This is like the hack special in terms of um, in terms of like how he revolves his game. Um, Okay, like I'm really simple. I'm really simplifying it. Sure. But um, is it, oh, the volume is pretty loud. Is it loud? Doesn't seem loud. Okay, maybe it's just loud in my earphones. A lot of like playing against like a really slow character is like getting to like is like waiting for them to do something, and then like and then just like punching them for it. I've tried doing that more in the game though match up and see positive results. Like yeah. I just flipped like use a blue and all the things are just slow and laggy so then I can usually punish. Like if that's like like that's the whole like basis of like doing it. You go in to like their range and yeah. like, make them think they're good and then they throw out a hitbox and then you hit them after their hitbox or whatever they do that might be laggy. Um so if you watch like any like high level play, yeah. Um, like you watch like Marth play, like watch like PPMD. Like his whole Marth game revolves around that. Right. Like if we can just show like the first like of the first like couple like seconds of like him against PPU, that's all it is. Like so, either if you're just like the better player, or like yeah. you have a faster character, that's what everything revolves around. For it's just revolving on like baiting your opponent so just so if you look gosh dang it it auto maximized okay a little off center but look at look at the green marth and how he's just waiting for like baits he throws out down tilts but um a lot of it is just him waiting for him to do something over committal or both of them are doing that. All right, sorry. Mm. Like they're both just waiting for like them to like overcommit to something. Down tilt their safe. Right. See, like PPU whiffed. PPU was whiffing. Okay, maybe yeah. like I remember this uh, video. They're both pretty good, but yeah. yeah. But like as you watch this like match progress, it's a lot of like. Okay, like who's gonna whiff first? See, or do something right, laggy. Yeah. Lag. Makes sense. All right, it's like a, you're gonna notice it more as they play. Lag, or like he got caught. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Man, yeah, the pressure. Put him in the corner. Oh my god. Detail is there just to make sure like your opponent has to do something. Because, like, if you have no threat, like, then they don't have to do anything. But every time, uh, like, PP, PP is just winning off of dash dancing, and, like, I hope this is, like, analogous to, like, you against a floaty. Like, you can just dash in and out of their ranges and then pressure them into bad spots and then just capitalize. It's not like Fox where you have to fight for, like, an opening. And that's, like, the fundamental difference of of like playing against like a fox or a falco and like everybody else it's actually awesome i'm good to know it'll change my approach like every i'll play every match like i'm playing falco yeah you can't do that it's like really yeah. bad <laughs> then again like you play venice w and golf the most right yeah like i play brian tran actually a lot now but he's also a falco so it doesn't change anything i thought he was a fox he is he switched he's a falco now Oh really? What? It's probably oh, better than Fox now. I see. Anyway, so that's um, like so pretty much like that's the concept of playing floaties. It's not as sexy as playing against a fox or a falco, where you can kind of like outplay and then get a grab into like a gratifying combo. It's more like no, like you gotta like fight for good positions, and then it, you earn it. You like earn openings off of them shielding, or you dash dance around. You make them think their hits are good, and then you counter hit them for like one to two hits, and then you reset. Yep. And like, it's you don't get kills. You get one hit. You get two hits, and it's it, it's like pulling teeth sometimes, 
but <laughs> that's that's how these floaty matchups work. If you that's go, good. like whenever I play Mac D, we joke around. It's like the person who's like less patient loses <laughs> like between us, and usually that's me. <laughs> it's a struggle. It is. Um, so yeah, do you have any like, questions? Uh, you seem to have cleared it up pretty much for me. Knowing that I don't have to be aggressive is... Well, you still want to take, like, have put pressure on them, but you don't right. have to be in their face. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll have to try it out to put it in practice, see what it feels like. So okay. you have to be... You have to essentially be comfortable with being in these, like, distances for prolonged periods. What? Are you, are you playing to me? Oh, sorry. Okay, there we go. Being in these, like, distances. Like, yeah. being like... Like... like yeah, it's being, not panicking. Uh, yeah, I got yeah. you. Like, being this close and being comfortable with that. A lot of people don't seem to be comfortable with this, like, distance and, like, holding that. And then, it's pretty much like... Maybe the... Okay, maybe they're not going to be that dumb, but that's pretty much <laughs> a lot of it. And then, like, Side bomber into you. <laughs> and then, your version of detail is, like, a lot of, like, because detail is, like, the, the pressure cooker, like, that, like, forces them to do an action, because that's your threat move. With, like, uh, with the Sheik equivalent, IMO is, um, your threat to, like, make them do an action is either these... Or um, or you can you have this godlike bear when they're on the ground. Okay. Like they're either gonna get hit by that and they're gonna feel very uncomfortable because they're eventually gonna have to do something, or else they're gonna keep eating those attacks and they're gonna have to like say, okay, okay, I have to commit to an act, I have to do an action. Right. And, and that's when this starts opening up. Okay. Oops. So like the core would be fair needles and dash dancing, and like just use that to like. Yeah. The best okay, then, cool. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not exciting. The only thing I would say you're careful of is like if you're t dash dancing too much, then they're gonna try to catch you with dash attack. Right. And then, but you can be prepared for that by just shielding, and then you earn your grabs that way too. Um, so yeah, that's like pretty much it for it. Um, any other thoughts? Um, do you have any other questions that we can go over for you? Uh. Someone in the chat asks, how do you deal with Falco laser pressure as Sheik? Um, you know, or is that like, not part of the topic? That's a very common question. I wish I, like... I, no, it's like, it's I, like one of those questions where there's... The answer is, it depends. <laughs> there's, like, so much that goes on. It's, that's the, what do you do with pocket jacks question. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, like, there's a million different answers. Uh, um... I think the ideal one is power shield bomb. To do that, yeah. correct. <laughs> also, very important is to learn to um, dash out a shield. Um. One thing, actually, I could say is like I heard someone say this. It may have been you, but I, I might have read it. I think it was Peepy, -pee, maybe, and it was like people just need to get better about like acting when they get hit with a, a laser. Like, don't make the stun longer than it has to be. Like, if you get hit, start dashing again. And I started doing that, and I felt an immediate like improvement because like you get with the laser and if if they're not perfect with the follow-up and you just dash away the, their whole thing changes like it's way different like they have to be actual like crispy instead of just getting away with it for free um yeah i like that a lot laser interrupts what you're doing but if you go back to it right away it's really a pretty small stunt yeah i mean a lot of it is the you make a really complicated uh you make a really complicated obstacle course yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the audience can see it, but like, if I can predict the nair here, like the, with this little like spacing, then I could, like, as they're lasering, I could start full hop jumping, avoid the laser, and if they're gonna go in, I go wham and I hit them. Yep. Or um, crouching helps a lot. Um, so this is like a little more trickier, but if you like, if you crouch into power shield, that like gives you more opportunity, more of a generous timing window for power shield, and it also lets you act faster because you're like crouch canceling. 
and, and potentially also like if they like shoot a low laser, if they don't shoot a low laser, like they may not hit you. Um, yes. So some combination of uh, full hop and respacing, wave dash out of shield, near out of shield, using platforms, um, just experiment and. I would say play like a million matches with Fal with like decent Falcos and just get hit and experiment and then play from mid screen and see what like makes Falcos flustered and what makes them less flustered. And the, the matchup's kind of awesome because once you get them flustered, but you can crush them. I'm Which... sure you have stories of Venice W. Oh, especially Venice W was the worst Falco ever to do it. <laughs> Venice W, if you got him flustered, you'd kill himself. You didn't have to do anything about it. But against uh, Golf and Brian Train are all pretty good Falcos. Still feels great. When you get them on the defensive, it's over. Like, Falco just become, falls apart. This matchup is super fun for Sheik when you get going. It is. It's, and then you get calling him really hard. Um, cheap, cheap, D Smash doesn't cover illusion sweet spots because um, the interesting thing is that with a. With a Illusion Shorten, actually, it gives you a little bit more generosity, so it allows you to go further below the stage and sweet spot if you shorten your Illusion. Yep. Um, that's something West Bulls taught me, so um, Down Smash is really bad if they're really good at it, because what they'll do is if you miss, they're going to just combo you while you're in Down Smash a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think Detail covers it, if you do it right at the edge. Um, if you're, like, really late... And like they're on, let's say they're recovering on the left, you yeah. can, or let's say like you can like try to do like a really quick needle if you yeah. have like no chance. Um, that's what I see. Uh, Mewtwo can do a lot is, is the needle for doing that. Because you're not going to get the detail in time, and yeah. um, if you um, do that, at least you have a shot at checking like if they're not perfect on the timing, or if or if they're a little and late. If you're not in so much risk when you miss it. Like if it doesn't hit them, you're not nothing. You know, you're still good. You still have stage positioning. Um, you, can you jab illusion to down smash? Um, yes and no. Um, if they have the presence of mind to um, to SDI the jab away or DI the jab away, the down smash won't connect all the time, depending on percentage. Right. That takes a lot of presence of mind. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that too much, uh, Chief Rico. If you're jabbing their illusions, but the thing is, if, they, if you can jab it, you can also like F tilt it. There's a lot of things you can do. If you, if they're in the spot where you could jab it, I feel yeah. like most Falcos don't do that recovery. They go down for the sweet spot, or they go high, or I don't know. I don't know. West Falls is unbelievably tricky on recovering. I feel like they have to be. Falcos have to be, dude. Yeah, they have to live. They have to live. It's not like Fox where you just <laughs> can get back. <laughs> Is there any other thoughts? Do you have any other thoughts? Um, what have I been struggling with? Struggling, struggling. I mean, other than I guess floaties, really. So yeah, I appreciate this episode. Um, uh, do all, uh, why is it everybody in the office makes fun of you? To make fun of me? Yeah. Behind my back? <laughs> I don't. Uh, I think I have a fun sort of ego. I like, a, like a joking sort of ego. I always go in every match saying I'm going to force lock. You know, like something like that. So it's like a, it's a, it's a play on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't aware that people like to treat you like the Crimson Buster, even though the Crimson Buster is there. Uh, he's still treated like the Crimson Buster. I'd say I rank higher than the Crimson Buster on the uh, Buster scale. Okay. Oh, okay. That's so um, So what's the, what's a little known fact that like, that you could share about... Twitch work life. That Twitch work know, life? No. Uh, the food's pretty good. We play a lot of Smash. We make up meetings in, in the gaming room. We like, put them on our calendars, like business meetings, and then we'll play Smash. <laughs> uh, we, we know we find ways to sneak in a lot of Smash, our Smash crew at Twitch. Damn. Um, I'm trying to think of something funny. Uh, we do a lot of money matches. We're, we're huge on, we have a lot of this uh, Twitch sub money to throw around, and we throw it around, oh, it's Amazon bucks, and we do it on money matches for a variety of stuff. For a while, uh, last year, I had a whiteboard on the wall listing my money matches for like 18 different games, and I was like, I'll take you on in any one of these. But I had to put an asterisk at the melee and say no Bobby Scar, because he would have used me like an ATM. <laughs> Please, I, I'm so sorry. Man, that sounds so amazing. Yeah, it's pretty fun. 
dude, the closest thing I get is, um, I get a new coworker that goes like, dude, like my, these are like academic part times that go to school. They're like, my engineering partner got four stocked by you at a tournament, and he's amazed that like I work with you. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sick. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, it seems like the questions have died down. A um, few announcements. We put a donation button, so if you like what you see, donate to us. I'm in the midst of wanting a new, um, just microphone. Ooh, upgrade the mic. And then this is a new Razer microphone. Did you see that? Shout yeah. out to Razer. It's sick. It's really sick looking. Um, also, I will be doing a mini series. It's a play on Thorin's thoughts called Taffo's Talks. Oh, okay. I like Thorin's thoughts. Um, and so these will be. I'm not sure if I'm going to stream these or if these are going to be a YouTube only thing. Yeah, um, you better stream them, Taffikins. <laughs> okay. Um, my, stream on YouTube. You should stream it live. Or not, you don't have to do it live, but you should stream it. Okay, like, I'll stream it once and then put it on YouTube after. Sounds great. Um, my first talk is going to be evaluating Yuji King's um, legacy. You better not be mean, Tafikins. You're always mean to Yuji King. Dude, I always say, like, I think he's, like, an amazing player. It's just his tournament <laughs> act and antics are out of control sometimes. They're out of control. He's out of control. Yeah. Um, so there, that's... Oh, go ahead. No, he does enter a lot of tournaments and uh, goes far in them, so it's probably very annoying for TL, I can imagine. It, it, it can be. Um, I won't dwell into me taking stories. Sure, sure, but, sure, sure. Um, Save it for time, talk. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, I guess per Twitch tradition, um, I'm sure most other Melee Twitch players are openly willing to get raided, because I read the... I read the Twitch policy on rating, mm -hmm. and if they don't want want it, then it's bad. Apparently, sure. No one doesn't want it, but yes, it is bad. Um, yeah. So let's look for a stream. Oh, let's do it. Oh, maybe a triple, three quick ones. Super Smash Bros. Melee. What a game. Um. Well, on the theme of. 20 GX. Yeah, they they seem to tag along with our theme. I so. love 20 GX. I want a 20 GX house for chic players. It would be very boring. It would not be boring. Are you kidding? We down throw tech chase all day and talk about it. No, we we need like the poor fox man. <laughs> oh yeah, we need. For... <laughs> sure. Right. Otherwise, it's less fun. You need the fox. Yep. And you need the Falco, and you need the the, the crappy Falcon that gets more stock, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's true. All right, cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna close up. Good night, All everybody. Right.